welcome to the final episode of things you may not have realized could happen in Red Dead Redemption 2. Today we are covering the entire epilogue of the game. Now I realized that it could have been in two parts, but I chose to do the entire thing in one go, so it saves you guys the trouble of waiting for the second video. As with the previous, I'll be showing you guys such things as hidden scenes, dialogue, small details that you may not have realized, and possible different ways of performing missions. Not only will there be these things, but I'll be covering some miscellaneous stuff too. Please be aware that as expected, there will be spoilers ahead for the game, both big and small. And just a quick note, I'll be showing these in the order that they occur. If you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do, and with that being said, let's get this finale going. Right, the first thing I want to mention to you is in a mission right near the start of the epilogue, and it's called Fatherhood to Beginners. After performing his work around the ranch, John decides to take his son Jack out to show him how to ride his horse a little better. Although reluctant, Jack agrees to go, and the pair head on out. Now, as John, we can tell Jack to ride either faster or slower. If you continuously choose the faster option, the pony will eventually throw Jack, but that's not the detail I wanted to mention here. After he gets back up and back to riding, if John tries to tell Jack to go faster and faster all over again, Jack will now state that he knows the pony's limits. So today, Jack learned a little something. Faster now? Come on! Sorry! If I go any faster, he'll buck me again! Okay! See? You're learning! Secondly, in the mission titled Jim Milton Rides Again, we are forced to head on over to a rival ranch who have stolen cattle from Pronghorn Ranch, our current home. Mr. Gweddies, who owns Pronghorn, needs us to retain his livestock. The proprietor of the opposing ranch is Mr. Abel, and has been hassling Mr. Gweddies because he refuses to give him his land. So over we head, with a few ranch hands in tow, and a tough firefight ensues. Mr. Abel has hired himself a local gang known as the Lagany Boys. After we battle our way through, we meet the gang's head henchman in the barn, and a fist fight occurs. The gang leader pulls a sawn off shotgun out on John, who manages to kick it away. Now the scene that plays out here may seem somewhat familiar to some people. If you look at the pose and position that John is standing in, it's the exact same as the cover picture for the original Red Dead Redemption. What I decided to do next was explore the open world a little bit to see what it looked like all these years later. I want to show you some of the things I discovered. Firstly, I headed south to McFarlane's ranch. I met a gentleman there and John can have this conversation with him. Nothing. Just looking around. This is private property. I meant no harm. It's quite a place you got. It's very nice, but it ain't mine. I'm farming for some other fell. I had some bad luck on my place. The fella here had some bad luck himself. Him and his family got hit hard by the sickness. Him and his daughter went off traveling, trying to deal with the sadness, I guess. Traveling, huh? Lucky them. <clears throat> I guess. Those who played the original Red Dead Redemption will of course know of the friendship between Bonnie McFarlane and John Marston, so it would make absolute sense that he wouldn't be able to meet her here. This is just a hidden dialogue that I thought was a nice reference to the original game. Shortly after, I headed west to Armadillo and spotted a couple more references to the first game and I think some people may have missed them. As I entered the town, as John, I was met with a gang of bandits trying to break their buddy out of prison. After saving the day, there was a brief conversation John has with the sheriff that went like this. Armadillo is indebted to you, though I fear it may be beyond Satan. I don't know what you made of that. But it was a close thing. And in light of that, and the sad demise of this settlement, I am resigning my post. The sheriff leaving, of course, is a setup for the next marshal of the town, who we know as Lee Johnson. While there, I headed on over to the general store, where John met the owner, Herbert Moon, another character from the original. Behind the counter is a photograph of the strange man, the ghost that follows John around, and acts somewhat as a moral compass. It's just a little portrait somebody gave me once. I always quite liked it. Why? No reason. Just seemed familiar. After finishing in the south, I decided to head back to more familiar locations. I travel back to the gang's original campsite, Horseshoe Overlook, and if you listen closely, you can hear the audio of John's memories of the place.
a nice little detail that once again some may have missed. Have you ever wondered what actually happened to the surviving members of the gang? If you search around, you can find a few of them. Pearson, the camp's cook, now runs the Jamble store in Rhodes. Mary Beth took her love of books and became a writer under the pen name of Leslie Dupont. Tilly Jackson got herself married and is expecting, and Rain's Fall has settled in Canada. Let me show you some clips. Pearson, what are you doing here? <laughs> Welcome to my store. How can I help you? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah! Beats the old butcher's table, doesn't it? John? John, is it you? How the hell are uh, you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Abigail, is she? She's well. Jack's growing up. Sweet boy. Not anymore. <laughs> but he's okay. How are you? I'm well. I, I right now. Silly romances, but it's fun. Oh, it's such fun. John Marston. Miss Tilly. That's Mrs. Tilly to you. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm well. Well and happy, and I miss you and Abigail. She's well. Jack's well. All is well, I think. I, I never thanked you for what you did. Didn't I meet you a long time ago? I don't know. With uh, Arthur? Arthur Morgan? Oh, yes. Uh, my name is Rangeful, and I'm Jim Milton. John Marston. Oh. Is Arthur, uh... He passed away. A long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He saved my life. He gave his. That doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> now, something that's a little miscellaneous. If you've started the epilogue, you will know that at first, John doesn't carry any guns. But there are several ways to obtain one. I found myself a fun way. In a side quest called Oh Brother, John meets up with two brothers who are battling get out for the affections of a lady. It's a comical mission that most may have seen, and yes, it can be completed much earlier in the game by Arthur. But if you wait until you take control of John, this quest will let you obtain a revolver before you're really supposed to. Also, while in Valentine, John met up with Mickey, who had memories of his conversations with Arthur. I used to know a fella, a bit like you. A few years back, Crazy kind of fella. But he had a heart on him. What was his name? I forget. Funny face. Alan. Or something, I think. He didn't like me much neither. But he was okay. Now after all that exploring, if you head back to Prongorn Ranch, a secret sea will play out, as the game would just assume that you hadn't left there the entire time. Oh, hey Jim back yeah I'm back where was he out you know no not exactly I don't well don't worry about it too long just taking care of some old business a little all right moving on John receives a telegram while at the ranch from what say the Adler in the letter, she tells John that she needs to speak with him and would like to meet up at the saloon in Valentine. Upon meeting her in the mission titled Gainful Employment, Sadie informs John that she wants a little help with her new job as a party hunter. Now at the start of the scene, she is just trying to enjoy a drink while she waits for John, but is being hassled by two drunkards. After making quick work of the two men, John and Sadie head out. But here's something that people may not have realised about this scene. Did you happen to think that one of the men looked a little familiar? If you did, you'd be right. This particular man right here is the same drunk who was pestering Arthur and Lenny all the way back at the beginning of Chapter 2 in a mission called A Quiet Time. How many of you spotted this? Now let's move across to the second part of the epilogue, and I want to begin with a gentleman called Guido Martelli. Guido Martelli is a crime boss who both runs and owns the city of Saint Denis in 1907. Nothing is done without his say-so. Now, in the mission, Bare Knuckle Friendships, Uncle informs John that he thinks he may have found their former gang member and friend, Charles Smith. 
Uncle believes that he may be fish fighting for money somewhere in Saint Denis, and the pair head out to find him. After questioning the locals, they find Charles in the back alleys doing just what they thought. But it turns out that Charles is actually throwing the fights for a measly few dollars, all under the orders of Guido Martelli. After Charles decides he's had enough and chooses to actually win the fight, they must flee for their safety. Upon exit though, they are confronted by Martelli's men, and a firefight ensues. Now most may have seen this mission, but did you realise that this wasn't Martelli's first appearance in the game? If you recall all the way back to chapter 4 of the game, in a mission titled A Gilded Cage, you will see Guido Martelli in a scene with Angelo Bronte. It turns out that after Dutch had ended Bronte, Martelli, who is the crime underboss, has now taken over the business. Back at John's camp, during the mission titled The New Jerusalem, the trio of John, Charles and Uncle are working together to build John's house in preparation for the return of Abigail and Jack. Now this is just a fun and heartwarming mission and so simple to do. But there is something that people may not have noticed not only in this mission but also in a later cutscene named The Best of Women, and that is The Blue Jay. This appears in both scenes and many believe this is the spirit of Arthur Morgan. If the player's honour rating was good and they chose to help John escape at the end of chapter 6, they will remember that Arthur tells John to go and be with his family, be a goddamn man, meaning for him to make sure that he looks after Abigail and Jack as John had a history of disappearing on them. Now the Blue Jay will appear when John is building his home and later on when his wife and child are returning to him. Did you notice this? Also, in the mission where John proposes, a quick scene plays when John is waiting for Abigail to return. He pulls out a wedding ring that he got from Arthur's satchel, and there's a loving couple across the street, both dressed in blue. Something borrowed, something blue. Now the following one, I have covered in the previous video, but in case you haven't seen it, here we go. Most of you will remember the Polish citizen named Robo, who back in Chapter 2, Arthur forcefully collecting the death from. Now fast forward years later, in a mission titled A Quick Favour for an Old Friend, John and Shady are on a hunt for an outlaw named Ramon Cortez, in hopes to collect on his bounty. Now the rumour has it that Ramon is hidden somewhere near Painted Sky, which years ago was the home of Robo. Upon arriving, Shady tells John to search the barn while she takes a look around the house, but if you think outside the box a little and follow Shady inside, you will trigger a hidden scene with dialogue. Ramon Cortez? We've come for you! Crap! Cortez, have you seen him? He's in the barn! Did I tell you? It's the barn! bester has been here for days! Do your worst to him! Are you sure he ain't in here? If he was in here, you'd know! Take a look! The one I want to talk to you about now is in a mission called Uncle's Bad Day. The scene starts off pretty nicely for John, who learns that both Uncle and Charles have built the barn on this farm. After all that hard work, the three of them decide to have themselves a little celebration. This comes with a night of drinking and singing. Now the thing that people may not notice in the scene is that the vocalist for Uncle, during the singing, is not the same person who provided the motion capture. James McBride provided the vocals for Uncle throughout the entire game. The original actor, John O'Cray, tragically passed away during production. But out of respect to him, Rockstar Games kept the scene as the original. Young Miss at Dancing School has taught the minuet to tread. Young Miss at Dancing School has taught the minuet to tread. But we go better when we brought our four-tack to Cathead. In the final quest of the game, there are a couple of things people may not have noticed. The mission is called American Venom, and it features John, Sadie and Charles as the three head north in search of Micah. One of the first men they come across is Cleet. He is one of Micah's associates and had a brief run with the Vandaling gang back in the day. They find Cleet in the town of Strawberry, and after capturing him, John drags him to the gallows, demanding information as to the whereabouts of Micah. A little thing that people may not have realised about this is after Sadie orders John to hang him, if John makes no choice at all, Sadie will eventually kill him herself. Now later on, after a ferocious battle up Mount Hagen, John finally confronts Micah, but he's taken aback when his former mentor, Dutch Vandalin, makes an appearance. During a tense standoff, John questions Dutch on what he's doing here. Dutch responds. What are you doing here, Dutch? Same as you, I suppose. Now John is there to kill Micah, as we know, but his speech from Dutch foreshadows that he has finally decided to do the same. Say something, Dutch! Say something! 
I ain't got too much to say no more. He shot me. <laughs> you shot me pretty good. That's all for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Turn on notifications to be alerted to any of my new videos. Support me on Patreon too, if it's all possible. You do receive some benefits, some goodies, stuff like that. If you wish to get in touch, leave a comment below or follow me on Instagram at PhilbyGiddy. Thank you to those who made it to the end and I hope to see you all in the next one.